And I was like, what? Say what? Right? <laughs> So yeah, I'm thankful for that. We need a pass to go out, or else you get uh, a fine. You get fined. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry. I know I have not um, uploaded in a minute, but I've been very busy. Um, that's that's a whole nother video i just wanted to make this uh quick video to update everyone with what's happening um in terms of the quarantine in france and how i'm doing and uh yeah stuff like that so we've been quarantined for like the whole country we've been quarantined for six weeks now going on seven and uh the quarantine should be a total of eight weeks that's I'm sorry my camera turned off so I had to fix some issues with my memory card and it took me a while so if the lighting looks different that's probably it as I was saying in France we've been in quarantine for eight we've been in quarantine for six weeks now but the total is supposed to be eight weeks but we don't know what's going to happen at the end of those eight weeks so at first the quarantine was announced for two weeks and then at the end of two weeks they announced for two more weeks and at the end of the two more weeks they announced one month so yeah just like everywhere in the world there's been a lot of uncertainties a lot of things have been cancelled a lot of things have been postponed for example i work but i'm also a student some of my exams were uh, postponed in terms of professionally in my job i had to give classes online <laughs> that was very interesting i did it on a platform called discord i think it's for like gamers and stuff like that but the good thing for me is that my students are adults and they're actually college seniors so they could we could easily like arrange stuff because like i know people are out there teaching little kids online and it's not always easy because parents have to be available the issues of wi-fi etc personally i have friends who have been affected right i'm from new york state and i have friends in new york city who've been affected so it's very scary watching TV um, every night and seeing what's happening in the United States and especially in New York City. But my family is safe and sound um, in upstate New York. My parents are working. <laughs> my older sister is a nurse, but I'm pretty sure that she's very careful. I don't think she's working directly with any um, uh, coronavirus patients, but she works in a hospital anyway. So and um she was actually supposed to be like right now as i'm speaking it would have been her day of going back to the us yes she was supposed to come visit me in france and we had plans to go to italy and spain so she booked a ticket in uh, october of last year because she came to visit me uh, in october and she really wanted to come back so she booked her flight right away and um, this happened so I remember when uh, we started watching what was happening in Italy I called her I'm like um I don't think we should go to Italy because you know this virus is expanding and she was like it's only one part of Italy we can go to other places so I was not feeling it I was like uh, okay but I was like all right then I started looking for Airbnbs in other places of Italy actually but then afterward, I was like, girl, we're not going to Italy. Do you see what's happening? Do you watch TV? Because I was panicking. <laughs> he agreed like, yeah, no, maybe not Italy this time. We're just going to do Spain. Soon I was like, Spain? <laughs> Spain won't be it either. And then um, eventually they said no flights coming out of Europe can go to the US and stuff like that. So yeah my sister was blocked she's careful but she wanted to like i think she, she was waiting until the last minute to see if she can cancel her flight or not or if she can still make it a lot of people were though a lot of people are still optimistic right which is not a bad thing i'm just thankful like I, there's a lot of people have it worse and um, it's been horrible seeing what's happening in france right now it's things are getting better but in the first few weeks it was a lot of chaotic there was now in some hospitals um, there were no masks and there were not enough um respirators i don't know if that's what you call them i, I watched tv in french all day now i'm like using french words in my head 
we saw makeshift hospitals with uh, the military patients being airlifted to other countries like germany and swiss and other neighboring countries because hospitals were too saturated and it was very scary shout out to all healthcare workers and other essential workers the very first week was very strict but then the following week other people could work in some industries but you still had to, to be authorized so for example we need a pass to go out <laughs> we need a pass to go out every day if i need to go out i need a pass it's just a paper you can download it and um, you have to write your name your date of birth your place of birth you have to write your reasons for going out some of the main reasons are to go out um, to do sports for at least for a maximum of one hour per day and it has to be individual sports it can be collective sports like with other people okay and um, it has to be within one kilometer of your residence or else because you have to write your address on the pass too or else you get uh, a fine you get fined 135 euros and a lot of people got fined and you can also go out to walk your dog uh, what else can you do you can go out to go to the pharmacy I went to the pharmacy and there is a long line not everyone can enter it's like one by one the supermarket is not the same shopping <laughs> there's a person at the entrance giving hand sanitizer to everyone it's it's so dystopic a little bit other reasons that you can go out are if you need to care for an elderly um, family member or somebody who needs help or maybe I don't know you need to, your, to give your kids to I don't know your spouse or your I don't know your the father of your children or something like that so you can go out if you're an essential worker you can go out but you have to tick the reason every time and you have to sign and date it and put the time <laughs> that you're going out <laughs> for example if you're going to do sport or you're going to the supermarket you need to put the time stamp and stuff like that another thing that was just like we haven't seen in a long time is the fact that the EU is open right between EU countries like the borders are open but like Germany was closing its borders people were closing borders to prevent people from traveling because people are people are stubborn and people always want to leave and you know propagate the virus everywhere else that being said um, I saw a lot of positivity come out of this maybe should I say humanity came out of this people finding uh, in um, ways to cooperate to work to uh, help other people to work to help elderly patients neighbors hanging out from across the from uh, across their balconies at 8 p.m people clap right if you forget that it's 8 p.m you just hear people clapping outside and you know it's 8 p.m so people clapping for healthcare workers and other people um keeping us uh, keeping our country moving and i feel like after this we we won't take a lot of things for granted we're going to appreciate things more right because i think we're going to have this collective trauma or collective memory if you will um of like 2020 and the pandemic right before the pandemic hit i was very busy like when i say busy i was so busy to the point of being stressed out so um, i guess for me the little i don't know if I should, it sounds wrong to say this but the little silver lining was being able to stay home and uh, take a break not necessarily like you know other people are like oh it's the virus by the time i come out the virus i'm going to have a banging body <laughs> i'm going to learn six languages i'm going to learn all the recipes in the world i've been taking my time to you know read and still study but like getting eight hours of sleep um that was rare that has been rare in the last year but i, I still need to work next week i'm starting to give oral exams online um so with my housemates we've been relaxing and uh we've been eating well <laughs> we've been like we've made a conscious decision to like make a homemade meal and eat lunch and dinner together so that's been cool but i mean i've been learning some recipes too but i'm not the crazy person who wants to learn all the recipes in the, of the world i don't live far from a park so i go running in the morning and then i come back and study i have been keeping up with friends and family on facetime and this summer i want to go back to the us to see my family because i haven't seen them since august of last year but i'm not sure if i'll be able to go back there's a lot of uncertainties in um, in terms of like flights um but i think if you're american you should be able to go back i think so but the problem is maybe the problem would be for me to come back to france because <laughs> i need a valid visa and my visa is going to expire at the end of august and in france august nothing happens everyone is on vacation so that means i need to do that earlier with that being said um 
I just know we will get through this. I think it's just going to be one of those things that uh, we are all going to remember and hopefully it makes us more thankful for a lot of things. Hopefully we don't take our health for granted. Um, I'm very thankful to be in France because uh, the healthcare system here is, everyone knows it better. <laughs> for example, I've had allergies, right? I've, I haven't had a fever or anything. I've had allergies, very bad allergies for the past almost a month now. And uh, I've had two doctor's appointments online and both of those doctor's appointments have been free. Right? In this period of the pandemic, it's free. The, the government is going to pay for it. I was like, what? Say what? Right? <laughs> So yeah, I'm thankful for that, but I'm thankful that my family is doing well. I'm thankful that my friends who are affected are doing better. Um, yeah, but at the same time, um, I don't know, this is definitely going to change us and it's going to change a lot of people and a lot of people lost their loved ones and they couldn't even attend funerals. So that's very horrifying and very scarring to see, but yeah. So yeah, that's my update on my quarantine life in France. Stay tuned and thank you for watching. Uh, see you soon. Bye.